So if you go to the courses, if you're completely new to bioinformatics and you haven't really studied how to code, one popular language to do that would be R. How many of you already are experienced with R? Okay, so if you're not an expert yet, I hope that by the end of the program, you will have enough exercise to be able to uh, feel comfortable with R, at least understanding the syntax um, and really understanding how to use um, you know, the different libraries uh, that are used in bioinformatics. So to give you an example, we're gonna go to the courses tab on the omics logic portal. And right here, let's search for genomics. So what we're dealing here with are sequences. And these sequences commonly come from genomics. They come from this field of genomics that deals with analysis of sequences. And uh, the first thing that we'll do is we'll go to this lesson working with DNA sequences in R. Okay, so uh, if you are following along, this is the link. And here uh, it gives a very detailed explanation of pairwise sequence alignment, multiple sequence alignment, etc. And so this is something that you can go through on your own. Uh, but uh, you should be able to start understanding as a result of this lesson, how can we deal with these strings of letters? In the case of DNA, it is T, C, G, and A. In the case of amino acids, there's 16 different amino acids or 22. And we will also see how um, we can convert these sequences, compare these sequences, align them, and, and find differences. So. The first lesson kind of introduces us to a critical point in coding when we use uh, uh, languages like R. Languages like R use objects and uh, they store information in variables. And once we have them, they can use methods designed to work with those specific variables and objects to perform different types of computations on them. So for example, here we can load a string in R, we use this symbol to equal, uh, to assign it to a particular uh, object. And then you can see that we can perform different functions, printing, comparing, com converting, etc. So if you click here on next, you will see that there's some more exercises on understanding the, C, the, uh, uh, the syntax. And once we go through the syntax, we get to a practice and the practice will have a console included here which you can actually just run and if you run it you will get a result now the result here is about an alignment score so here you can see that we loaded some strings and we compare them and we get a score this is a similarity score for two of these sequences after we do that, we can compare two other sequences. So notice here in the beginning, the beginning is almost exactly the same between the two sequences and our score is 102. In the second part, we can run it and we can notice that the score is actually different. So here the score is 55. So it went down and we can notice that in the beginning, they are not the same. Now let's try over here to do an assignment. In the assignment, if we run it, it gives us an error. So now we can't just run it. We need to understand the syntax and we need to apply what we have learned to the assignment that we have. So right away, what do I see? Because we are paying attention to the syntax. We see that this function right here is not finished. Pairwise alignment should be DNA seq1, DNA seq2, right? So we can just copy it from here, paste it over here. And if I run it, what will happen? I will get a result, but my result is the answer is incorrect, okay? And this is an important point because you will always get bugs when you are running some script. And so now your goal is to figure out, well, what is wrong with this. And the wrong thing is the assignment. Of course, it says, let's use alignment between the exact same sequence. How would we do that? Well, we could do that in two ways. One is we could copy the exact same thing. Or another one, because we have two objects, we can just compare 
the same object to itself, right? And if we do that, let's run it again. And here again, something is incorrect, okay? And why? Because it says the one stored in DNA seq2. So now let's change it to DNA seq2. Excellent. Now we have the correct answer. Okay. So this is how this works. These are exercises that are built to help you think about how to understand the logic behind the analysis, understand what goes into the analysis and be able to practice it until you get it right. So this was a little example with pairwise sequence alignment in R. If you go over here, you will find some more practice for multiple sequence alignment in R. And eventually, you will also have an assignment that gives you a very practical example about metabolism of a uh, drug where you have to write your whole code independently. Okay, so this is how these work. And I'll just show you the practice example uh, right here to understand the actual visual representation of those sequences, okay? And this is a visual representation of multiple sequence alignment. Okay, what do you do when you have learned some of these basics, like writing some code, running a pipeline? Now you need to get to a way to interpret this information, right? So to interpret this in information, a lot of times, we have to deal with data visualization. Data visualization can help us look at very complex data and simplify it to the point that we can start making biological conclusions. And that is the essence of bioinformatics. So here I will briefly share with you uh, <coughs> this uh, Colab notebook. This is a notebook that you should be able to run uh, in your browser. And uh, to run it, what you should do is you should go into the file and save a copy in Drive. And so if you have a Google account, you should be able to do that. It guides you through all of the steps that you need to take to start visualizing this data. So to run each box, this is a Jupyter notebook. So to run each box, this is written in Python you would have to run this play button, or you can go to run all right here. Okay, what does this notebook do? And this is kind of giving you the vision of where we are going with all of this information. Here we will take some example files from this study. We will then load one of them and we'll identify those specific elements like PRRA, right? We can find them, okay? If you just search for them, you will find them right here. Then we will align sequences and we'll be able to navigate the sequences for the full uh, uh, spike protein, okay? And this is going to be uh, an interactive visualization. Then after that, we will load in the spike protein, and we will actually look at the receptor binding domain, looking at specific residues or amino acids that are important for binding and important for other things as well. And then we will construct a phylogenetic tree first by looking at a network. And that network will show us some of those viral sequences in bats and in humans, like the RADG13 and the human. And then finally, we will create a real phylogenetic tree to understand how that could be linked with time. Okay, any questions? This is just to give you an overview of some of the tools that we will go through. Again, we will go through our platform, the TBioInfo platform to see how pipelines are built. Okay, uh, Sneha is asking a question. After opening Colab, where are you putting this drive link? So you go to file right here, 
and save a copy and drive. And that will be your own notebook. You can now save this notebook and work with it in the future. 